Number 1. In this question, you will be asked to talk about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. People make friends in many different ways. What do you think is a good way to make new friends? Use specific details and examples in your response. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 2. In this question, you will be asked to give your opinion about a familiar topic. After you hear the question, you will have 15 seconds to prepare your response and 45 seconds to speak. Do you agree or disagree with the following statement? It is important to remember and learn from the past. Use details and examples to explain your opinion. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 3. In this question, you will read a short passage about a campus situation and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have 30 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Read a letter that a student has written to the campus newspaper. You have 50 seconds to read the letter. Begin reading now. Now listen to two students discussing the letter. Hey Ted, you're a runner. Did you see this letter in the paper? Yeah, I did, and I used those. And? I think it's a terrible idea. How come? Well, she really hasn't thought it through. Like, 
the thing about making them safer. What she's not thinking about is the long-term consequences of running on a hard surface. What do you mean? I mean, it's not good for you. It's too hard on your bones and joints. If you run repeatedly on a hard surface, it can lead to injuries, or that's what I've been taught anyway. It's better to run on a soft surface. It does less damage to your body. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, so actually it wouldn't be safer. And her second point about changing the way they look. Yeah, I don't think people will like it. So they'd use them less. Yeah, I mean, one of the main reasons people enjoy them now is it's a way of taking a break from the rest of campus, from buildings and streets and stuff. It's, you know, a chance to feel like you're out in nature. Oh, so you wouldn't get that effect anymore. Right. It'd be just like you were on a regular street or sidewalk. It wouldn't be as relaxing. The man expresses his opinion about the proposal in the student's letter. Briefly summarize the proposal, then state the man's opinion about the proposal and explain the reasons he gives for holding that opinion. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number four. In this question, you will read a short passage on an academic subject, and then listen to a talk on the same topic. You will then answer a question using information from both the reading passage and the talk. After the question, you will have thirty seconds to prepare your response and sixty seconds to speak. Read a passage from a psychology textbook. You will have forty-five seconds to read the passage. Begin reading now. Now listen to part of a lecture on this topic in a psychology class. For example, I recently read about a case in which a researcher was given two groups of monkeys, and he was asked to train these monkeys to pick up a ball and put it in a box, and he was told to record how many hours it took to train each monkey to learn to do this. Now, before he started the training. The researcher was told that one group of monkeys was highly intelligent, and that the other group was less intelligent. In truth, there was no difference between them. All the monkeys were actually very similar in terms of intelligence, but the researcher didn't know that. He thought one group was smarter, so he expected that that group would be easier to train. So 
<laughs> what happened? Well, the researcher trained the monkeys to perform the action, and it turned out that, on average, it took him two hours less time to train the supposedly smart monkeys than the supposedly less intelligent monkeys. Why? Well, it turns out that with the supposedly smart monkeys, the researcher smiled at them a lot, gave them a lot of encouragement, talked to them a lot, worked hard to communicate with them. But with the monkeys he thought were less intelligent, he wasn't as enthusiastic. He didn't try quite as hard. wasn't quite as optimistic. Explain how the example from the professor's lecture illustrates the experimenter effect. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep. Number 5. In this question, you will listen to a conversation. You will then be asked to talk about the information in the conversation and to give your opinion about the ideas presented. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to a conversation between two students. Hey, Carrie, what's the matter? Well, you know I'm in the choir, right? And we have a concert tonight in an hour, just an hour from now? I know, I'm going. Really looking forward to hearing you sing. What's the trouble? Well, we're all supposed to wear white shirts and black pants at the concert. You know, so we all look the same. Right. Well, I wore my white shirt to dinner, and I spilled spaghetti sauce all over it. Oh, no. Yeah, there's a huge red stain on it. I can't wear it for the concert now. It's the only white shirt I have, and there's no time to go to the store to buy another one. Wow. What are you going to do? Well, I just called the choir director, and he's obviously unhappy about all this. But I told him about another shirt I have. It's not exactly white, not white like the others, sort of off-white, sort of cream-colored. And he says it's okay for me to wear it, but... But it's not exactly the same color as the others. Right. I'll feel kind of funny. Some people in the audience would probably be able to tell. Hmm. Don't any of the other choir members have an extra white shirt you could borrow? No, I've already asked around, but my roommate has one. Great. Use hers. Well, the thing is, she's out of town. I've tried calling her, but haven't been able to reach her. She probably wouldn't mind, but, you know, I've never borrowed any of her stuff before, and I really don't like taking things without asking. Briefly summarize the problem the speakers are discussing, then state which solution you would recommend. Explain the reasons for your recommendation. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.
Number 6. In this question, you will listen to a short lecture. You will then be asked to summarize important information from the lecture. After you hear the question, you will have 20 seconds to prepare your response and 60 seconds to speak. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. Birds have some of the best vision capabilities in the animal kingdom. Some bird species have vision that is 8 to 10 times greater than humans. Overall, a bird's eyes are extremely important for its survival. One aspect of birds' eyes that plays a role in helping them survive, in other words, to find food or to avoid predators, is the position of the eyes in the skull. Some birds have eyes that face forward on the skull, kind of similar to how humans' eyes are positioned. Forward-facing eyes allow a bird to clearly see and judge distances because it can focus on objects with both of its eyes and correctly perceive height, width, and depth. One type of bird with eyes positioned in the front of the skull is the hawk. Hawks eat animals like mice. Hawks have such good eyesight that they can spot a tiny mouse in a field from high up in the air. They spot the mouse and swoop down to catch it. Without such good eyesight, they would not be able to spot or catch their food. Other birds have eyes that are located on each side of the skull. This positioning of the eyes can help a bird to avoid predators. Instead of just seeing what's directly in front, they can see things that are on either side, permitting them to watch for danger in all directions. Imagine a duck wading near the edge of a lake. It needs to spend time eating grasses and insects, but it also is on constant lookout for danger from its predator, like a fox. An eye on each side of the duck's head allows it to see a fox approaching from either side. If it spots a fox, it can then fly away to safety. The placement of the eyes are critical in helping the duck avoid predators. Using the examples in the lecture, explain how the position of birds' eyes is critical to their survival. Please prepare your answer after the beep. Please begin speaking after the beep.